The first argument angle that I've seen is the financial or business argument. That is that the AI generation makes stuff cheaper to produce, makes it so you can produce it faster and makes it so you can produce it with less skill involved. Content production is currently on demand. It's like the faster you can produce it and get it out there, the better. We see this with the, the rapid releasing of Marvel movies, the rapid releasing of pretty much anything on Netflix, the rapid releasing of novels. It's in every creative industry. It's just the constant flow of content. And the same is on YouTube where some content, um, content creators do daily or we or buy daily or just try to keep that that content flowing because that's where you maximize the profit by maximizing the output. The problem with this is when you give it into corporations or the idea of just maximizing profit is you're selling out moral and meaning for nonstop profit. Just a quick one on that <clears throat> before moving on. So just on the commodification, like uh, keeping it to the business slash like financial side of things is like the commodification of content. Because I've already made the argument that what these AI generators produce is not art. It's just content. It's content being uh, masked as art or being presented as art. It's like an art Im imitator, if you will. Uh, so anyways, so what's happening is you have the commodification of these this AI content, and it's coming at the cost of artistic merit in that sense, uh, because the AI generators provide fuel like a commodity. Sure, they're providing fuel for the dumpster fire in that regard, uh, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, personal feelings aside, I think that the utility of AI may not be the actual get rich quick scheme that I think some individuals hope that it's going to be. Because I've already made the, the point before that one, the big boys do it better. What I mean by that is that the corporations, if it turns out that you can actually monetize um, AI in some way, then the big boys are going to do it better because they're going to have a whole army of interns playing around with the AI generators. But then I want to raise a second thing. Now, a completely different way of consuming media and, and how the AI generators could be utilized in the future. It could be take out the middleman altogether. Death of the artist i'm talking full-on death of the artist here and uh in this in the sense of just what uh 100 customized imagine for a second 100 customized consumer content intensifies customized consumer content intensifies what do i mean by that i mean Inter, some sort of interface where the consumers come to a particular platform or something like that. And the platform is set up using AI generators and it could be some medium. So say it's like uh, shows or film. And then the consumer can go in, in there and kind of request, oh, I want a show that is, I want to, I want to romance or I want an action show with a guy and he's doing a bank heist or whatever. And there's espionage and blah, blah, blah. Some sort of vague thing. But the AI will be good enough so it's just like instantly just kind of come up with and boom. There you go. There's a, there's a movie that does not exist starring actors that were never alive. And it just comes to life just like that customized consumer content intensifies that's what i mean by that no artists needed artists be damned so there's that in terms of uh commodification and lack of artistic merit because at that part there's no artists at all you're full on in a whole new dimension of uh of simulacra 
maybe you're okay with making things cheaper, like making products cheaper via what is the ingredients put into those uh, so that you can sell at the same cost, but cost less to put the thing together because it's made cheaply. And that'll also increase your profit. Maybe you're okay with hiring people in other countries that will work for less because you want to increase your profits. And that is another way to do it. If that is what you value, then that is what you value. And I'm not going to be able to change your mind with a stupid video saying, I don't think that money is the top value that we should all, all go by. Yeah. <clears throat> so that, so that's what I was saying, commodifying at the cost of artistic merit. And, um, and then uh, Crimson chimes in uh, with integrity as well. So it's just making it cheap. We talk about it's cheap, fast and easy, but at what cost though, you know, and that's, that's the big thing. Like there's more value to art. It, it's it's not like another commodity commodity like corn or oil or something like that where where it's like it's there's some utilitarian value uh, to it as far as that goes. But there but that is kind of like how I feel like some people are looking at the AI generators is that it is a commodity in that sense where it, they're just looking at it from a utilitarian standpoint where Ian's saying it's just it's just fuel to the fire in terms of churning out content. Oh, you need new content, need new content. But it's like, OK, but <laughs> like, what does that even mean? You know, there is there any meaning behind that? This is a very business minded way to look at art as it's just a commodity. And it's just something that you can put out in front, in front of somebody doesn't matter, push off. And there are definitely people that make products that look like art, like books, like images that are just commodities. But I don't think that every image or every book is art. I think there's the product and there's art and there's some that do both, but not every work of fiction, not every visual is art. And I'm sure that's going to be another area where uh, other people disagree with me on. Another comment that I've seen on this subject of money is, if you enjoy doing art, then why worry about getting paid for it? That, that's the biggest thing with AI flooding the market, right? Uh, one, actually, AI flooding the market means that it's burying actual artists. To note, one of the biggest sci-fi fantasy sci-fi magazines that a lot of authors come up in, Clark's World, recently had to shut down because they were force-fed so many AI stories that they had to shut down. Authors already have a hard time being seen in the slush piles. Yeah, the Clark's World thing, that was where um, it was for an anth uh, sci-fi anthology project and they were getting way too many uh, submissions that were AI generated. It was like, it was some crazy explosion. Like they were used to getting, I don't know, le a r less, less than a hundred in a month or something like that. Submissions that were, uh, that had not necessarily uh, AI generated, but had plagiarism in them. And then once the AI thing started blowing up with like the chat GPT or something like that, they reported in the article, I read the article in an earlier uh, episode that they, it was like something crazy, like over 500 submissions. They had to like deny like over 500 submissions and they ended up blocking the people who submitted those pieces too, that appeared to be not only AI generated, but the stuff that the AI was coming up with was actually plagiarized as well. So as you can see, it's starting to like screw with people's opportunity uh, to kind of get their work out there. So basically making it, uh, making it difficult, but it's also uh, on the flip side is making it difficult for entrepreneurs uh, to create these opportunities for artists, because Ian did mention something about how it only being about the bottom dollar. Well, I can agree to that in some extent, if, if Definitely if we're talking about corporations, because corporations in it and of themselves are not individuals. Corporations is just, and it's not even human. It's just a soulless entity that all it cares about is the bottom line. However, that is not to be conflated with the idea of individual entrepreneurs. Uh, the corporation is not an individual. It's a soulless entity, but the individual entrepreneur and businessman can 
is capable of understanding that uh, people invest in art for values that transcend the bottom line on a financial statement. So in other words, there's more, there's more to art than just the financial value of it. And I think that that's on, understood on an individual level. 